Okay, I'm going to show you how to read an economic model. And this video is actually combined with mistake number one that students make when they build their own economic models, which basically results from them reading models incorrectly. So how do you read an economic model? You read it by saying you want to maximize the objective function, which is this part, by choosing the choice variable. And of course, the common mistake is that students will read this as maximizing the choice variable. So if you're taking a microeconomics class, you need to sear into your brain that you will never, ever, ever maximize a choice variable. Just don't do it. That essentially makes the problem trivial. So the next step after you figured out that you're maximizing the objective function is to sort of figure out what terms in the objective function are benefits and what terms are costs. Now, these two models I have on the board are actually pretty simple. We've got the benefit, if you're maximizing profit, is revenue. The cost is just cost to the firm financially. And each of these depends on the choice variable. So that means if you change the quantity you produce, you're going to change the amount of revenue you get, but you're also going to change the costs to the firm. And so you want to sort of orient by identifying what's the benefit, what's the cost, and then sort of think in your head about why does this depend on this? Like why would your revenue depend on the quantity you produce? And of course you're like, oh yeah, that's because if I produce more, I'll sell more. Why would the costs depend on the quantity I, I produce? Well, of course, producing stuff costs money. So you're sort of orienting by figuring out why is this relationship true? Now, after you've done those things, you figured out what is the person choosing, the person or firm or government or whatever, what are the benefits and what are the costs of choosing that, and you've sort of figured out why is this relationship true. Then you might want to start thinking about the other variables in the problem. Now, there are no other variables here, so I'm going to um, insert one. I'm going to insert an exogenous variable, which is just the wage of workers, and in this model, I'm going to let that be exogenous, which doesn't necessarily mean the firm doesn't have control over it. It just means, for now, the way I'm thinking about this, I'm simplifying all of the decisions the firm makes other than the quantity to produce. So we're just sort of uh, wage takers. We just look at the market and see what the, the wage is. So that's exogenous. In which case, if you see an exogenous variable inside a, a cost or benefit, in this case it's in the cost, you want to figure out why this relationship, why does the wage rate influence costs? And here it's pretty obvious you're going to have to pay your workers more, that's going to increase the cost of producing another unit. It's fairly obvious, but sometimes you have to kind of sit there and think about why is that true? And also, how will that modify this relationship? Because the relationship between the cost and the choice variable is going to be the key driver of um, the optimal choice. And by, by putting that exogenous variable in here, we're saying this variable is going to modify this relationship. So um, really, reading an economic model is really about figuring out what are the parts and if you haven't already figured out what are the basic parts, choice variable, benefits, costs, exogenous variables, endogenous variables, you want to know those vocabulary like the back of your hand before you start to read models. But after you know that, then you can start to sort of figure out piece by piece, what are we maximizing, what are we choosing, why does each relationship hold, and how do the exogenous variables modify um, the relationship between the choice variable and the cost or benefit. That's basically how you do it. So let's actually um, read this model down here. And oftentimes you wanna just get in the habit of saying maximizing by choosing time spent getting ready in the morning. So what are we maximizing? Well, we're maximizing beauty of ourselves minus opportunity cost. So maximizing beauty minus opportunity cost by choosing time spent getting ready in the morning. And we see that beauty is a function of time spent getting ready. And that makes a lot of sense. If, if you spend more time on your hair, you're going to be more beautiful that day. And then opportunity cost depends on the time spent uh, getting ready in the morning because of course you could be doing other things. So that makes total sense and we've sort of oriented toward the model. 